The police assault on Jose Colon in New York City that we just talked about is not an isolated incident. Not with 50,000 drug raids a year, 150 a day being conducted by law enforcement in America. Recently and unusually, one of these tragedies was caught on video. Police in Ogden, Utah, raided the home of 45-year-old Todd Blair in the middle of the night, reportedly while investigating his roommate. Police video, which we will show you in a moment, clearly shows what happened. The police burst in the home to find Mr. Blair standing inside the door with a golf club, and within seconds, and without a warning like drop your weapon or something like that, Police Sergeant Troy Burnett shot Mr. Blair three times directly, killing him instantly. We want to warn you, the video you are about to see is graphic and it is disturbing, but it is vital so America sees what can happen to innocent people when the drug war goes terribly wrong. Take a look. Police Police We called the police department several times for an interview or a statement, but we're told no one could be provided because Mr. Blair's family has expressed an interest in suing the police. A phone call to the county attorney was not returned. Joining me now is Reason Magazine's Radley Balco, who covers the war on drugs and its deadly consequences. Radley, welcome back to Freedom Watch. Surely one of the more graphic and one of the more deadly uh, of these raids uh, that you have covered. So, question. How many more of these killings of innocents inside the home of the innocent have to occur before there's enough outrage so that these things stop? Wow, I, I wish I knew the answer to that question, Judge. Um, but, you know, last time I was on the show, uh, we talked about another case. I mean, this isn't even the most recent killing in one of these raids. Um, Yuri uh, Stamps, uh, I think he was about 67, 68 years old, uh, was killed in uh, New Hampshire, or I'm sorry, in Massachusetts during one of these raids. And he was unarmed. He was completely innocent. Uh, they actually uh, were after his son. Uh, so, you know, th these, these raids are, are deadly. You know, I, I, in this particular raid, uh, the video that you show, I mean, as you just showed, I mean, as graphic as it is, um, you know, these are very volatile situations. And, you know, I don't know if you or and I were in the position of that officer and somebody's you know, has a silvery object sort of pointed in your direction in these very kind of volatile, high-stakes raids that, you know, you, don't, you and I wouldn't have done the same thing. Right. Uh, the problem is that we are creating, or the police are creating these situations in the first place, that they are, we are policing nonviolent conse consensual crimes uh, with these very violent, uh, volatile tactics. And right. that, it, I mean, these consequences are predictable, and they're going to continue happening until we change that. In, in this case, the person they were after no longer lived there, they didn't bring the warrant with them. They tried to detain Mr. Blair ahead of time under a pretext so that they could invade uh, an empty house. They didn't have one of those formal meetings at the police department where they scope out what they're going to do. They had a coffee at a local restaurant where they planned this. I mean, the behavior of the police in this case is utterly reprehensible. The guy doesn't know who's breaking in his house. He stands there with a golf club, and they shoot three bullets into his chest. And someone in the government says this is justified. And then the government lawyers get a judge to seal the records. So we really don't know what planning there was or even what they found after they invaded and executed the search warrant on this house. Oh, yeah. And, and let me clarify, I wasn't trying to justify all the police actions in this case. I'm saying the, the, the sort of momentary decision to pull the trigger is one that's hard to sort of find fault with given the circumstances. But certainly, yeah, there were all sorts of errors leading up to this raid. Um, and, and, you know, the very fact that they were going after a guy who, uh, you know, didn't live, at, didn't even live in the house at the time, uh, that they knew that there was a potential for violence in this, and they actually, you know, had planned to catch this guy, uh, the guy they were after, uh, while he was out in his car, uh, but then went ahead with the SWAT raid anyway. Uh, right. So, there, yeah, there were lots of really bad decisions. <laughs> but I think you really put your finger on the problem here, which is, you know, not only are we continuing to use these tactics, but then after the very predictable consequences happen, which is the death of, of innocent people, uh, there is, the, the government then goes into cover-up mode. Uh, the police hunker down. They don't talk about it. They do everything they can to release as little information as possible. 
And, and even more sort of infuriating about this is that they then get cover from judges who, who seal records, which is exactly what, the same thing happened in this case in Massachusetts. Um, they've locked the family, all the records in that. Hopefully when the family sues for the wrongful death, the execution style uh, death uh, of, their, of their loved one, uh, the court, the records will be unsealed and we'll find out what really happened because America needs to know these things. And what little we do know is thanks to people like you. Radley, thanks for joining us.